welcome. Thank you. Are you happy to talk with us? I'm Dirk. I'm very happy. Yeah. Yes. Great you had the opportunity. Thank you. So for the people who don't uh, know who you are, I'm Dirk Lien. Yeah, would you want to tell people a little bit uh, about what you do and what you're known for? Uh, I play the Hartangefil, which is the national instrument of Norway. And uh, that, uh, I started with that when I was five years old. Five years old? Yes, yeah. my parents uh, played uh, a lot of that music in mm -hmm. my home when I grew up. Yeah. And uh, recorded all the Hardangerfield music that was played on the radio, yeah. on cassette. Wow, uh, at the early age. Yes, yeah. uh, and then uh, when I heard the Hardangerfield sound, mm -hmm. um, I wanted to learn that instrument Yeah, when I was five years old. Without any influence from, from parents or other, did you, or how did that happen? I uh, just listened to the sound yeah. because my parents played it a lot from yeah. the radio. Yeah. And um, uh, it just uh, touched my heart and my yeah. soul. And uh, I wanted to learn it. But it's only at that, uh, that time it was only a uh, full size. Yeah. Uh, so my hand was not long enough oh. to play the Hardanger. Yeah. Uh, so then I started as a uh, regular violin. Mm -hmm. uh, in half size. I see. And so, so for lay people like me yeah. and 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 others, what is the difference between like a, a normal violin and then the Hartinger Hartinger fiddle? Like, what is the difference? Mm -hmm. yeah. The Hartinger fiddle uh, has resonant strings. Mm -hmm. so There's two levels of strings, uh, uh, which give a ringing sound, beautiful sound to the instrument. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and it's related to all Baroque instruments mm -hmm. with the sympathetic strings. Yeah. So it's, um, it gives reverb to the instrument body mm -hmm. uh, and the sound is uh, very rich. Yeah. yeah. So is the, is the Hartanger uh, fiddle, is that associated more with Nordic, uh, Nordic sound or is that is that, uh, that comes in my mind at least, is, is that true? Yes, yeah. very, mm. uh, very true. Yeah. Because uh, you only find the Hardanger in a small area in Norway. Mm -hmm. uh, and the rest of the Nordic countries have the regular fiddle. Yeah. So it's a very small con uh, area and... Uh, uh, so special sound only to that area. Yeah, well, yeah. that's where you find the Hardanger yeah. instrument and, the, and that sound. Yeah. And the the type of uh, tunes are special. Mm -hmm. So um, there's been a lot of uh, of travelers yeah. going through the country mm -hmm. with music, and also been uh, the Hardangerfield areas are also at the west coast. Yeah. So there's been a lot of visitors uh, uh, from the sea coming in. I see. So um, the influence can come from different mm. countries and different traditions. Yeah. Mm. So, so this passion for, for the Hartang and uh, it began at early age uh, and five years and, and, it, and it stayed. Yes. So it's probably your longest love. Yes. Yeah. So, so can, you, can you walk us through like uh, what happened after you became five? How, how did the relationship with the Hartang and Fiddle develop? Oh. Uh, I was um, very lucky because uh, my father saw that uh, um, I fell in love with this instrument. I yeah. wanted to learn it. Mm -hmm. uh, and he then learned the Hardanger uh, himself yeah. in a uh, grown up age. Wow. So he could the teach. Same, the same time as you. Yeah, so yeah. he could teach me. Wow. Uh, because I grew up in an area where there were no folk music. Mm -hmm. Uh, so there were no neighbors or masters on the Hardanger that I could learn from. Yeah. Um, uh, so he uh, started to learn uh, the fiddle uh, and then he, he taught me. Mm -hmm. And uh, he also uh, uh, gathered uh, several young people from the area. So we had a social mm -hmm. gathering uh, yeah. and a, a rehearsal every Tuesday in our house uh -huh. when we were small. Yeah. Uh, which also was important for the social part of it. Mm. Uh, but most of the people that w had the same interest were living far away. Yeah. Uh, I was living in outside Olufsen, Yeah. and uh, the Hardangerfield tradition was um, 
further south of the west coast in Telemark, in mm. Setestal, yeah. uh, and in Valdres, yeah. so middle, uh, further south uh, mm -hmm. in Norway. Yeah. Uh, so, um, um, but I also played for a dance group, mm -hmm. uh, and they were very active, so early, at early age, yeah. we could travel abroad yeah. and meet other traditions and other countries, traditions. Um, at, at what age were you then, when, when that happened? Ten, maybe. Yeah, so you became quite good at, a, at an early age. Uh, I was lucky to at least travel a lot <laughs> at early age. I see, okay. Yes. I see, okay. And then then, uh, then you kept on and, and, and you played as well in the ceremony in the, in the Olympics, in the Lillehammer. Yes. Uh, um, so I remember Lillehammer also yeah. uh, as when the Olympics were held there. So was was that uh, was that uh, something which was a surprise for you when you when you when you became so good in the handling of it? Was that always a always an ambition for you to be really good? I didn't think about it as being good. Uh, I didn't. Uh, I joined some competitions, little yeah. competitions, but that was not my goal. And I was very lucky because I, I got a relationship to the instrument that um, uh, I played every day. Mm -hmm. uh, and the days I didn't play, my father said, asked me if I didn't, uh, if we should not go and play a little bit. So yeah. he didn't push me, but he was still he was around and and was listening when I was playing, rehearsing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, and the activity, uh, um, uh, I was lucky to to be part of both the dance group and uh, and two parents that traveled a lot to mm -hmm. these competitions, two festivals. Yeah. So, um, so you had a, a little group, uh, a music family uh, 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 around that. Mm. Yeah. And uh, so I think the I don't think the focus was not to be good, but to uh, because it was quite busy, mm -hmm. so uh, it was all about just being prepared. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and it's uh, to keep the fingers moving. Yeah. Uh, and also to meet an audience, mm -hmm. uh, and a meeting between people yeah. was. Uh, uh, I was looking forward to all these meetings, mm -hmm. uh, and I remember also to the the energy. Uh, that experience from the the audience yeah. that was quite special. Yeah, and when you became a teenager, uh, uh, did something change then? For example, in my mind, uh, teenagers sometimes rebel about something they've done before, and probably as teenager you realize more that you know folk music is not mainstream music. Uh, that's uh, uh, that it's not listened by majority of people. It's a very special or, or a minority group. Uh, did that change anything, your attitude towards the Hardanger Fittel when you were a teenager? Or? No, because uh, I also did, I had a quite a busy teenager life because I, I played handball, I was a keeper in the handball. Ah, I see. Uh, and I did the, also the normal things that other uh, young people did yeah. in our village. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so you played the handball, that was a popular sport there. And, mm -hmm. I yeah. went to the dance, mm -hmm. I was a, a yeah. kind of a normal youth, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so I didn't uh, sit home by myself and play and didn't no. do the other stuff. I, I did, yeah. uh, you know, both. So you weren't bullied about being the hard and the little uh, well, girl. I, I I remember that it was I can I can remember the the feeling of walking in the in the small area where I lived with a fiddle case, mm -hmm. and that was not nobody else was doing that. No. So um, uh, and I also I could not share, I could not talk to anybody uh, except from the ones I was playing together with about mm, yeah. the style because yeah. it was not a common thing uh, that people knew uh, anything about or had experienced in where I grew up. Mm, I see. Uh, <clears throat> and after, after then you, you finish school and then um, you, you keep on having the career with the fiddle. Uh, what, what did cross your mind then? Like, uh, how, how did you approach your career around 20, playing the fiddle? Uh, how, how did that happen? Then I had uh, already been 
got the chance to travel yeah. to different parts of the world, mm -hmm. representing Norway, yeah. uh, a lot of traveling, very busy life. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember I lost two friends uh, at that time. I didn't have time to, to go through that because yeah. I was so busy. Uh, and uh, how old were you then? Yeah. Uh, 18. Yeah. Uh, one of them was uh, in a flight crash. Mm -hmm. Flight crash. And uh, the other one was uh, doing suicide. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I was not. Uh, I was not there because I was traveling. Yeah. Uh, you didn't, looking back, you didn't have time for grief. No. Yeah. But yeah. I had the music. Yeah. So for me, I had the music. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and and that was my best uh, therapist yeah. uh, and a detox channel and um, um, the best friend in a in a sorrow yeah. process like that. Yeah. Uh, but but I remember the the busyness mm -hmm. uh, that sometimes uh, I felt hard to stop. Yeah. Uh, and uh, didn't know how to stop and um, actually I didn't want it to stop because it was yeah. a lot of inspiring things yeah. uh, that, that I got the chance to do. I see. So like the career just developed, there were more, uh, you got more uh, festivals, you got more orders, uh, people wanted to listen to you and, and, and things just took off. Yeah, uh, my yeah. dad uh, uh, said that you need to have uh, uh, a real job, yeah. you know, uh, because it started as a hobby and mm -hmm. uh, it was also um, kind of planned as a hobby. Yeah. Uh, I never decided that it should be my work. Yeah. Uh, so at that, uh, around 20, um, yeah. I uh, decided to to try to uh, to get a real education. Mm -hmm. And, start, <laughs> and started at, uh, at uh, design uh, the interior uh, art school in Oslo. Yeah. And uh, so I, uh, I was educated as an interior architecture and furniture designer. Yeah. Um, but then the Olympic Games came. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I used six years to take three years yeah. at the uh, art school. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but so, oh, and I haven't been working one year with that, one no. day with that, mm -hmm. uh, because then the music was, was just too much rooted yeah. in my life, and yeah. and I got the chance to actually have it as a living. Yeah, great. Yeah, as you were telling me off camera earlier, that's the only recently you 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 had a had a. Uh, had a had a job, so to speak, because yes. you've been freelance traveling or and playing uh, all your life. Mm. Yeah, is is the Nordic history important for you? Now we're sitting in your home, and I I feel the Nordic inspiration a, a lot. And is, is has that played a large uh, a large role in in in, in your life? Yes, uh, I think. Uh uh, there is a uh, spirit and a uh, and, uh, uh, the Nordic people is a group of people that is connected mm -hmm. yeah. and um, and that is uh, weather um, economics um, uh, we have helped each other mm -hmm. far back yeah. Uh, so the I, I feel a very strong uh, common soul in the Nordic countries. Yeah. Um, but it is also because it's uh, contrasted to a lot of other exciting countries. Um, and within Nord the Nordic countries, there's a, there are also a huge difference. Mm -hmm. uh, but it has become a, a mark. Yeah. of the Nordic countries has become kind of a group and and uh, in America or abroad they often use that term of mm -hmm. the folk music comes from the Nordic countries yeah. uh, it's a Nordic sound yeah. of the of the folk music mm. uh, and I think we are we have some common values yeah. um, we are not afraid to be alone like mm. in general yeah. maybe we actually like it 
<laughs> sometimes too much. Seek solitude. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. We're not that good in being social, maybe yeah. a little bit shy. Yeah. Uh, I, well, at least I talk for myself. And mm. uh, um, I think it's a strength. And I think also uh, when foreigners come to Norway, it's uh, at least Norway, uh, it can be hard to, to really get to know Norwegians yeah. because of that, yeah. because of these values. Mm. Um, Until they have a couple of beers, beers oh, yes. oh, wine glasses, then, yes. they, then they change yeah. very much. Yeah. yeah, and then it's yeah. totally on the other side of yeah. So, mm. and, and that is a maybe insecurity or shyness or yeah. um, not being used to being super social, I think. Mm. Yeah. I think you're kind of uh, loading our batteries by ourselves mm. and then we go out and meet people. I see. And and folk music for you is it is it uh, uh, since you dedicated your life to it the fiddle and the, and the folk music and 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 is it in your mind important that we we keep that tradition in in the Nordics and, and Norway? Mm, it's very important. Yeah. Folk music is very important in all countries. Mm. Uh, it has a value uh, as history. Yeah. Uh, that is very important to. Uh, to uh, to bring forward in all countries mm -hmm. uh, to uh, to keep up the the feeling of identity and feeling of um, uh, that a tradition uh, is moving from generation to generation yeah. that uh, a play a Hadrangafil tune that is being played maybe uh, several hundred years mm -hmm. it's very strong yeah. feeling uh, and it's and the composition is uh, uh, made out of several souls, mm. changed a little bit from generation to generation. Yeah. That for me, that's very strong. It's yeah. strong, and uh, uh, and that's kind of keeping us together, mm. um, not only in our life but where we come from in our past yeah. lives. And Ma where... Maintain our her heritage. That's important. Yes, yeah. and also uh, I'm also a strong believer that the. That is so. Uh, we we bring with us a lot of our past souls, and mm -hmm. our uh, uh, we have it in us, and we will bring it forward when we die. Mm. Uh, so, um, and and that for me resonates very strongly to to how the traditional music is being handed over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With respect and yeah. with uh, trust. Yeah. Uh, when you say that, I, I have I have uh, I have no problem in believing you uh, because you've shown such a passion for for what you're doing, and and you even even after you played a lot, then you then you decided to take a PhD in the in the Harlinger Fiddle, yes. which I think was very fascinating. So walk me through that. What what happened uh, when you wanted to even get to know the fiddle and the and the story behind it even further. Mm -hmm. So what 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 happened that ha happened at that point? It was uh, I came in uh, I was uh, close uh, in the middle of my life mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I've been uh, touring a lot. Uh, got the chance to travel uh, to a lot of places. Mm -hmm. uh, meet a lot of people. Uh, so many people that it was every time I was dreaming I was just chaotic with a lot of people yeah. uh, it was not uh, I was not afraid but it was just a lot of people mm -hmm. all the time and uh, and that was uh, how my life was mm -hmm. uh, and and too high tempo uh, so you didn't have time to uh, to uh, to detox every experience, mm -hmm. uh, good or bad, very often just good, mm -hmm. uh, and um, and I was just I need to stop and I need to um, ha to to fill my brain with I, I want to learn something new mm -hmm. uh, that, that that I don't know before and mm -hmm. I need to. Be, Kind of fresh. Uh, I need a fresh air, mm -hmm. uh, unused, uh, and to just take a break and 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 go into a new world. Uh, yeah. Kind of a restart. Yeah. Uh, 
um, and then I got, uh, uh, then I became deaf on my right ear. And uh, when did that have to happen? That happened uh, three months after I got the PhD. Okay. Yes. So w why was that? Well, how 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 come to people? I was uh, it was just a bacteria infection, mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, uh, I was just mixing my last album, mm -hmm. and uh, um, suddenly uh, I became a little bit just. Uh, I felt that I got a cold, but not not uh, heavy, not a lot of fever or stuff, but just okay. I'm getting a cold. Mm -hmm. Um, then it took uh, two days and then the ear was infected and, uh, and I became very uh, dizzy mm -hmm. and after two weeks I was deaf on my right ear and um, did it become better or are you still deaf? I'm deaf. You're deaf in the uh, yes. you're still deaf. So, did, so it didn't heal? No. Oh. No. So I then I was uh, I got the operation a cochlear implant mm -hmm. on my deaf ear so now yeah. I can hear it's a mechanic sound on the right ear and yeah. the left ear is yeah. normal. Yeah, was that a was that a traumatic experience for you since music plays yes. such a part? Yes, yeah. of course. That's yeah. the worst thing that can happen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that was only three months after I got the PhD and got into the academia and. I had to start by saying, "Oh, I, I, I need one year break. Thank yeah. you for mm -hmm. the the place, but uh, I need one year break because now I'm just uh, yeah. too sick to to do that." Yeah. Um, when people experience such events, they often go through a lot, emotional and mm -hmm. and and um, emotional. Yeah, a tough emotional experience. Uh, can you describe little to us what what uh, what you went through to, during that time? Uh, in the beginning, I was I think I was too sick to be to think about it because mm -hmm. I was so dizzy. So yeah. the only place that uh, the world didn't go totally around was in my bed. Mm. Uh, but then again, uh, it started to cl the the cochlear. Uh, started to close, so I, I needed an operation in Oslo. Mm -hmm. So I was sent there, and I was sent back, and then I was just in my bed. Uh, and I, um, I can't remember really. I, uh, maybe it was just so dramatic that I didn't uh, feel any, anything. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't remember. I was not uh, in a heavy, heavy grief until later. Mm -hmm. Uh, so after after the shock period and and just the acute yeah, phase of it, yeah, maybe that's how it is. Mm. Yeah, then then you you experience the grief. Yes, yeah. and so then uh, how did that manifest? Uh, I became practical. I was just uh, cleaning the the calendar because I needed space, mm -hmm. uh, and I uh, needed um, I needed time. Mm -hmm. uh, and I needed a quiet place, mm -hmm. uh, but also because also the sound experience was so huge, uh, different. Uh, when you put a, uh, the sound on this on the cochlear implant, it's um, it's very uh, loud and and uh, mechanic, mm -hmm. uh, and that also. Um, go straight into the body. Mm -hmm. I, you, uh, I didn't understand why I was so tired, mm -hmm. but I think the body used a lot of energy just to try to hear. Yeah. Yes. Um, but what I did was to just clean the calendar and, um, and then I just walked a lot in the nature mm -hmm. uh, and um, cried a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and just uh, I just uh, took the sorrow and invited it in mm -hmm. uh, because I knew uh, either uh, I think that was I knew that was the only way. Yeah. Uh, and it was so uh, I don't I I don't think I had any choice. No. Often when people experience this, they go to different phases. One phase can be that they're in a denial, like before they reach accept. 
Right. And so, do you think you went before you started to accept it and and go accepting the yeah. sorrow? Do you think something else happened before? Uh, Were you angry, for example? Or? No, <gasps> no angry. Mm. Uh, I was uh, I was just really sad, and I, but I was practical. Mm. Uh, I don't remember the 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 order of that, but I think. Uh, in the beginning, I was really practical, uh, so uh, so uh, I didn't have any appointments. Mm -hmm. uh, then I was free to kind of both feel and uh, try as much as I needed. Mm -hmm. uh, but I was thinking that, okay, that's it. I'm not going to play the fiddle anymore. Yeah. Um, but I didn't know what that meant, really. Yeah. Uh, because it was such a shock. Yeah, exactly. And, and for many people, it might be hard to realize the difficulty around it. But you played, played it since you were five, and you play. You we describe an important relationship with the fiddle. It it helps you in sorrow and it gives you also good mood. And and then you experience something and you can't really use seek, it. In use the it to so uh, mm. that must have been extra extra tough then. Mm. Yeah. So what did you use instead? You, you talked about going in nature, accepting, accepting it and crying. And yeah. Did you use uh, any of your family, your friends or, or your husband? Yes, I had my family. Uh, I didn't have that much space for anyone else. No. So um, I didn't invite a lot of people in there because I didn't know I had to find out who I was in this new situation first. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I'm lucky to have a good family, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, so they were uh, there for yeah. me. Yes. Um, and do you think that you that you coped pretty well? I remember I was really sad. Yeah. Yeah, and I cried a lot. Yeah, it didn't. It can happen with many people, uh, as you probably self know that people seek into things in grief which are not there might be feeling that they're helping in that moment but not in the long run yeah for example uh, seeking to alcohol yeah or or things which have a negative influence on them in the long run yeah did you have any period where you where you had sought things which you knew were not good for you no because no. i was just too sick i think mm. um and i was just too busy try to because I got the damage in the balance as well. Yeah. Uh, I was just uh, uh, too busy trying to walk. Yeah. Uh, and the first year, I I just I couldn't walk by myself. Mm -hmm. I just had to have a, a person. Yeah. And um, and that was on a spike mat. I use I, I used a spike mat two oh. times a day. Yeah. Just to, I went to a quiet room. And uh, was lying on the spike mat and fell asleep mm -hmm. and had two siestas every day. Yeah. That kind of built spike up. Spike mat, you mean the, the one with, uh, with the spikes up? Yes. Well, for me, I can't stay there more than 10 seconds. Why? <laughs> it's hurtful. It's but, hurtful? <laughs> you think so? Yeah, I think so. Yes. Yeah. But, uh, but okay, I see. You know, it's the different degrees on it, so yeah, you can have... Probably. Probably I, I maybe I've tried the wrong. One. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I see. So so, but uh, but uh, but do you think that uh, that uh, that during that time did you did you discover new sides of you? You tried tried to accept the, the the new you. You didn't weren't able to play the fiddle the same the same way. Mm. Was there something which which came out of the process which was new to you? Um, it's just uh, it, uh, it's just a very very uh, strong experience that uh, that have marked me and uh, uh, I remember when I went to the sound training uh, mm -hmm. once every week mm -hmm. to train up the sound on the cochlear implant mm -hmm. uh, and after one year one Monday uh, like every time we were listening to music there were no uh, scale. There were no mm -hmm. pitch in the in the in the signal. Mm -hmm. So I was just thinking, okay, 
the cochlear is designed for the speech mm -hmm. and not music. Yeah. And I was just, okay, yeah. that's, that, that was the end. Yeah. And, um, um, and one Monday, I remember, I was listening to um, Lisa at the school, which is mm -hmm. a very simple uh, children's, uh, very well-known children's song in yeah. Norway. And uh, that was also uh, a part of the training process to listen to things you, the brain knew very well, mm -hmm. so that you could kind of... Um, almost fool the brain to think that you can actually mm -hmm. hear yeah. um, and one day I could actually take the key yeah. uh, I could hear the tones mm -hmm. and that was such a strong day then I, I realized that oh the cochlear can actually uh, the music can come through the cochlear yeah. and that opened yeah. up uh, a world for me but but the experience to, to answer your question is, um, the, I, I think the experience is, uh, have changed me in that way that I'm more thankful. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm, I've changed values. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in what way? What, what values did, do you think changed? Um, more time with people. Mm -hmm. um, uh, less material. Mm -hmm. Um, choose uh, um, activities and uh, and uh, uh, um, choose things with meaning. Mm -hmm. um, think about how um, how much do we really need? Mm -hmm. uh, can we can we manage with less? Uh, how how big shall we grow in this world? Mm -hmm. Um, how much money do we need? Um, we, I needed more time with my friends. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to give more to my friends. Yeah. I prioritized differently, more, mm. more focus on relationship with people, and yeah, yeah. same. And what what happened with the uh, with uh, with the um, with the relationship with the fiddle? Then he finished the PhD. Uh, did you try to play again, or how 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 how, how did that evolve? Mm, I tried to play again, mm -hmm. and uh, it was an alien experience yeah. because it sounded so different, and uh, uh, it was it was not music, and I I lost control. Mm -hmm. uh, I felt that I really lost control of how it sounds like. Yeah. Um, and at the same time, I could, I actually had something to put my brain on, mm -hmm. which was the PhD work. Yeah. Uh, I think that saved me yeah. in many ways. Yeah. I could dive into, read a lot of interesting books, mm -hmm. um, dive into, learn some new things, uh, get some new friends, colleagues through the, uh, the university. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't play that much. I, but I went in and, and took up the instrument and said hi to an old friend. Mm -hmm. um, Do you still have it? Oh, the fiddle, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. It's good. Um, and now I play. Now you play? Yes. Great. So when did that happen again? When you, when you started playing? Uh, it was just slowly a process when I got on my feet again, could walk on my own. Mm -hmm. uh, I just try to let it be um, the whole process go in a tempo that uh, all parts of me could follow mm -hmm. uh, so I tried to if I felt tired I just I tried to 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 uh, feel am I thirsty or am I hungry mm -hmm. uh, do I need to sleep or do I need to see someone? Do mm -hmm. I have uh, what? What is the need? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, in between there, uh, as I said, I, the fiddle was lying in in the case in the room, mm -hmm. and uh, in between everything else, I was just uh, opening the case, just talking to it a little bit and uh, playing a little bit, not that much. Um, 
and then the PhD took over was a lot of writing. Mm -hmm. But also the the research work included uh, new compositions. Mm -hmm. So I had to bring out the instrument yeah. to finish the PhD. <laughs> and, um, and that was also then uh, a warm welcome. Yeah. And then I, that was a perfect, actually, a, a gift at that time because then I can work without having, uh, I could play and work with the instrument mm -hmm. uh, without having to uh, think about if, if it was good enough for a concert mm -hmm. or for people to listen to. But I could, uh, I could um, start to warm up my relationship with the fiddle again mm. uh, on my, in my office. Yeah. Uh, in the PhD world. Mm. So you had to retrain yourself a little bit to approach the field in a different way, more slower and, and probably hear differently and yeah. do everything differently. Yeah. yeah. And uh, was it strong love when you finally finally managed to play it again the yes. way you were happy oh, with? Yes, oh, yes. <laughs> mm. uh, and it's still different, it sounds different, but it's all about... Um, I try not to... When I'm not when I'm not talking about it, I forget it. Yeah. Uh, and I tried um, to be kind of aware of that, to not think about it, if mm -hmm. if that's possible. But yeah. that was a goal for me. Yeah. Uh, and also not to think about that I was uh, wearing the cochlear. Mm. I remember earlier that I decided that the cochlear should be is now a part of my body. Mm. Uh, uh, so it was a lot of times I went in the shower and forgot to take it off <laughs> because uh, but that's a great approach just accepting that, that, that it's not a foreign object but a, yeah. a part of you yeah. yes so interesting that, yeah. yes yeah. Mm. Uh, so I included it in my body and yeah. uh, and uh, it, it is part of my ear and and um, uh, uh, and I feel like a robot. I mean, I have a <laughs> magnet in my head and a wire well, going yeah, into the yeah, cochlear. And yeah. uh, so try to kind of, mm -hmm. now I can laugh about it, but of course yeah. it was really, yeah. um, it, it was a strong experience, but um, it is, I didn't die, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, Was that a part of the gratitude process that you focused on perspectives and that you lived and and then you were grateful for, for, for living and keeping your, mm. keeping your health intact. Mm. And, uh, and also uh, uh, how lucky we are to have the health care that we have in this country. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's covered. Mm. I got in there and I got this operation and was the beauty, most beautiful people around me yeah. uh, all the time. Yeah. Uh, uh, and maybe I needed that perspective. I'm, th I'm thinking about it now. Mm. I needed uh, maybe that's it's 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 kind of maybe tough to say that we need such things happening no. in our lives. But <laughs> but um, uh, something needs to happen mm -hmm. in uh, the world yeah. at the moment because we are. We are too busy. Uh, we don't. Uh, we are flying over all the small mm -hmm. details yeah. in nature and in our lives, yeah. um, and it really just go the wrong way, yeah. both in nature and and as a human. Yeah, I think that's a very good point. And and I, even though I'm a psychologist, I didn't really identify with that until something happens to you, mm. and and same for me if something. Some things have happened in my life mm. which leads to a change. Mm. Uh, so, so, uh, and and people who have gone through specific things, they identify. But it's really hard to talk about it mm. unless you experience it. Yes, yeah. it is. So, uh, so, I, but I identify with that. What you say? But I'm thinking a lot about that. Why do we need? Why, why, why do we need to? To uh, to experience these things, to mm. be to see that perspective. Yeah, it's um, um, it's really uh, it should be something in in uh, in our mindset and in our uh, philosophy mm. and uh, and also beliefs. Uh, either it's the 
um, in in God or in uh, in uh, a human mm. or in nature. Um, it should be enough. Yeah. Uh, I agree with you, but <laughs> it's, often, it's often not, as you say. Yeah. But we are as lucky that have yeah. the music, I have to yeah. say, though, because uh, uh, I feel the music is connecting both, uh, um, I believe, in, in a higher power or uh, uh, the connection to nature yeah. and, and how uh, everything is connected to, to, the, to the human soul mm -hmm. and spirit again. Yeah. So, uh, and music is uh, is just a gift uh, and a and a, uh, as a door mm. uh, into this. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, at some point, you have experienced some seconds that you're totally free mm. when you play the music. Yeah. Uh, and Sometimes I, when I hear musicians talking about it, I feel a little bit <laughs> jealous because I can't play an instrument. I yeah. can't feel that, but I, I, it's it, it's maybe through something else. But but uh, it is is very fascinating to hear mm. people who have such a passion for music mm. uh, that they that it's they can experience. Zone. Yeah, it's it's freeing the spirit a lot. It's mm. a free zone, and yeah. the, uh, the brain is just shutting down. Mm. Uh, so yeah. it's really a gift. Yeah. Uh, but I think I think you can reach that level uh, uh, by just uh, practicing uh, yoga mm. or uh, different activities. And yes, uh, mm. to to shut the brain off. Yeah, I think so, and just yeah. go on the on the drift yeah. on the um, uh, like an animal mm. uh, to to. To feel the energy and uh, and to uh, uh, yeah to uh, be closer to to people around you, mm -hmm. uh, listen a little bit better. Yeah. And do you do you what place would you say you are are in today? Are you are you happy where you are today? Uh, yes, yeah. because. Uh, uh, A, I cannot do anything about it. No. Uh, uh, and uh, I've decided that uh, um, it's only up to me. Mm -hmm. uh, I cannot blame. Uh, I can, of course, uh, blame the doctor that didn't uh, brought me in uh, early enough. But yeah. uh, but uh, I'm the only uh, loser there too. Uh, so I, I there's no point. Uh, so the only way is to just let it go mm. and uh, just release all those um, uh, anger or um, sadness. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know, I think it's important to don't be afraid of the sadness, mm -hmm. uh, but just let it be there until it just leave by itself. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think that's a very key uh, just to clean the calendar was for mm. me that that was so important. Yeah. Um, and uh, during this time, uh, we are of course biased in what we do uh, because we work in clinical psychology and and, and and stuff, and and we we would of course want to want to bring psychology more to people mm. that people use that. Did you uh, did you think during your situation that you needed to talk to someone, an expert outside? get advice or help with some of the things you went through? Yeah, uh, I, I, I didn't do it and I, I, I didn't think about it either because um, I, I really don't know why. I, maybe because I had my family around me yeah. and also because... Do you think stigma least... played also a part? Stigma sometimes? That people are afraid or that yeah. they're shameful? Or... Oh yes, yeah. absolutely. Mm. and. Uh, uh, but I, uh, I didn't. Uh, it was hard to put words on what had happened. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's uh, that was why I, I didn't think that thought. Mm -hmm. uh, but because I didn't. Who am I in mm -hmm. this? Yeah. Uh, and um, I have to find that out myself first. Mm -hmm. So maybe that uh, uh, that's how I felt. Yeah. I have to find this this out first. Mm -hmm. and find some words, a label on it, and then maybe I can go and talk to someone. Yeah. Uh, so, I have, so I know what to tell them, in a way. <laughs> <laughs> what 
what happened <laughs> I see, there. I see, yeah, exactly. Uh, I don't know yeah. if that yeah. uh, seems logic, but... Um, I mean, I, th I think with all of these things, how people experience, that is logical because they mm. feel and think that that, that that is how they see stuff. And, and I think that sounds pretty reasonable compared to how you describe the relationship with the fiddle. Mm -hmm. Also in tougher times, you you were used to working on things by yourself. Yes. And, and then you seek the nature yes. a lot. And, and the uh, spike mats. Mm. And the spike mat. Yeah. Which was also <laughs> a quiet room. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, yeah. which kind of um, stabilized the thoughts a little bit. Yeah. And um, yeah. Uh, I, f I feel the spike mat is doing, and I still use it almost every day, mm -hmm. uh, because it shut down the brain yeah. and it, it warms up the muscles and uh, it makes me sleep. Mm -hmm. uh, so for people that uh, is not... Uh, um, don't like yoga or don't find themselves resonating to mm -hmm. that type of uh, um, uh, relaxation. Mm. Uh, I maybe the spike mat can can work because yeah. uh, uh, it is really a a game uh, a timeout mm. half an hour. Yeah. Mm. I see. And, and uh, do you think that like your, your strategies and, and dealing with like this tough period, uh, did, you, did you keep on using those strategies later in life? Of course, when other things happen, which are not, maybe not as serious, but when you're feeling down or stressful, do you, do you keep doing, doing what you learned in that process, visiting the nature, accepting the grief? Mm forcing the cry out a little bit. Mm. Do, do, do you keep on doing that? Yes, yeah. uh, but I, I'm seeking more people now. Yeah, uh, so that's what you changed. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm training myself to, to uh, be able to integrate more people in my life. Mm. Uh, because I have, I think I have been uh, uh, working a lot by myself mm -hmm. and uh, and I'm charging my batteries on my own, yeah. and I like being on my own. Yeah. And uh, after this, I see that um, uh, it's so valuable to share time with mm. people. Yeah. Uh, and I need, I also need to be stimulated mm. by people. Yeah. I think that's very important. Yeah. Uh, and and that has changed. Yeah. So, so now, now that has changed and consci consciously you're more aware of if you're having a downer period that, that you want to seek, you want to be with people, you, you are seeking them out. Yes. Yeah. And maybe dare to, to, uh, to be more honest, yeah. saying that can we just sit down or can we go for a walk or... Yeah. Uh, and maybe that is also just age, but I think it is because of what happened mm. uh, we have nothing to lose yeah. in a way yeah. um, and maybe in that way uh, it's possible to help others mm. because uh, if I open up maybe others dare to do it too mm. um, and also our um, to be a musician today uh, is different than it was in the 18 and the 90s because then uh, it was uh, today um, uh, we are hardworking musicians mm. uh, and we invite the audience uh, up on our knee. Mm. Uh, it, I, I think it was a bigger difference between the audience and the stage yeah. in the 80s and 90s. Yeah. Uh, and the press was uh, treating it differently as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I like it today when we don't have any superstars anymore, you know, and uh, um, we're, all, we're all just normal people trying mm -hmm. our best to, to be um, uh, uh, close to values mm -hmm. and, and uh, helpful yeah. to others. Um, so it, 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 it really is a thankfulness yeah. uh, to life yeah. uh, and to, to small things. Mm. Uh, I, I think I see more uh, a 
of the small things now than I did before. Mm, I see. Yeah. And um, and looking forward, uh, what are what are what are the things you're going to focus on in, in the next year, and uh, and what uh, what role does the uh, fiddle play? Uh, I miss uh, to play. Yeah. And so I feel it's really coming back. Yeah. Uh, so you think you're able to play now? Uh, yes. Like, yeah. Mm. I've decided that that will happen. And, yeah. Uh, uh, and the brain is in uh, it's incredible yeah. it's a cr incredible uh, tool mm -hmm. because um, you can fool it to do so much different things I mean both bad and good yeah. uh, and uh, if you feed it with what you want to happen it will happen mm -hmm. it's magic yeah. Uh, and I feel that I really miss playing because it's been a lot of writing so, mm. uh, and a lot of um, health issues. Yeah. So now I just want to play. And I, I want to go me. back to playing. Yeah. I, I, I'm looking forward to um, uh, to share the energy with the audience. Mm. I miss that. Yeah. Uh, and um, to meet, uh, I've trained myself to to be more social. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, uh, it's almost like starting all over again and I have uh, a lot of things I kind of disconnected from mm. because it's such a long time ago yeah. uh, uh, but we had one concert now uh, after the corona and uh, it was just incredible it was Good magic yeah. oh, <laughs> didn't, uh, didn't feel great to be back after all those years yes. that you that you did something which you didn't believe that you were ever going to do again. Yes. That must just, have been how felt How is it to be good. on a stage? Yeah. Mm. You know, and uh, we were there and and everything came back and uh, the joy, the strength, but just in a hundred times stronger. Yeah. Was it overwhelming? Did you cry afterwards? Yes. Or? Did you? Yes. Yeah. Cry and goosebumps. And, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So, so uh, tears of happiness. That's yes. often different than tears yeah. of sorrow. Yes. Yeah. But tears are important. Yeah. Thank you very much for being with us. Uh, it's been great talking to you, and uh, we really appreciate uh, that you share your story with us. I think it's going to be inspiring for a lot of people out there. And uh, if you don't mind, we have a last question. Mm -hmm. So, if you could change anything, like looking back and change anything or the decisions or the roads you've taken looking like what, what what would you change i would not change anything you wouldn't change anything no no because i think uh, everything is connected yeah. and i think it's uh, that's why i'm here now and um, uh, i think we learn from all our moods mm -hmm. um, uh, both good and bad yeah yeah uh, and it, uh, as long as we are um, looking forward, trying to be present, uh, and, and we're just thankful for the life we have. We all have something. I think, I mean, uh, in all families, in uh, all the people have something that is uh, hard to, uh, you know, live with or mm. challenges and... Uh, I think we just need to be more open and uh, and um, and also just ex um, um, just to uh, take everything in and wish it welcome. Yeah. And uh, so no regrets, as Sinatra would sing it. What would that be? Of course, I've done a lot of mistakes, <laughs> you know. But um, yeah. would that that just make me a more perfect? person because yeah. I'm not the perfect person no uh, so that's why I would rather just keep all my mistakes yeah. and be a not perfect person yeah uh, I'm relaxing more with that and um, uh, and then I'm not uh, putting so high expectation to myself either yeah uh, so rather accept all my faults and mistakes yeah. and move on um, that's great that's a that's a Wonderful final note. Thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you for having me.